there but uh, for today. And then, yeah, so we're going up uh, today. Lunch, enjoy the white sands. Hey, good morning. We're uh, nice and early this morning. Welcome. Grab a seat uh, if you haven't already. If you're in the foyer, or, uh, yeah, come in. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, join together in worship. Um, if you can, please stand. Um, yeah, I feel like there's a real special grace to enter into worship today uh, and encounter Jesus um, yeah, as we look to him. Here we go. To you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down to you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden, you are our one desire. And you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God let your fire fall down. your breath come from heaven and fill our hearts with your life we are here for you we are here for you yes we are we are here for you mm, so good to you our hearts are open nothing here is hidden you are our one and you alone are holy, only you are worthy, God, let your fire fall down. Let us shout, let us shout, be your anthem, and your renown, fill the sky, we are here for you. Let your word move in power and let what's dead come to life. We are here for you. And we are here for you. To you our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. Let your fire fall down. Come and be with us, God. To you 
our hearts are open, nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You alone are holy, only you are worthy. God, let your fire fall down. Welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. Be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore you. Let every soul awake, Almighty God of love. Be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise now. We welcome you with praise, Almighty God of love. Be welcomed in this place. And let every heart adore you. Let every soul awake. Almighty God of love. Be welcomed in this place. We choose to welcome you. Come and move among us now. Welcome you. Yeah, let's continue to welcome him in this place. Are you 
Lord, we shout your praise, and our hearts will cry. All the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Grace are you. will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing grace are you lord all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing grace are you breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. So good. Great are you, Lord. Thank you for all you've been doing this week. Great are you, Lord. You've been so good to us. Sing praise to you, Lord. Mm. Worthy, you're so worthy of every song. And there is none beside you 
Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around. We sing holy. There is no one like you, and there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. us this morning, Lord. We thank you that you you want us to know you. And Lord, this morning, would you open our eyes as we've been singing to the wonder of your word as we hear from it this morning, Lord. Would you open our hearts to connect with, with you alive with us today, Lord Jesus. Lord, would you, would you show us the way? And, and Lord, would you guide us 
to the people who want to be seen, the people who long to know you and know your truth, Lord. Would we be lights to them? Would we show them your light, Lord? Spirit, come. 
amongst us. Amongst us. Lord, would you bless us this day? Would you give to us each as we need, not as we deserve? Would you reward us regardless of how long we've been on this walk with you, Lord? Would you reward us new and old? Would you bless us? Would you bless us together and we've gathered in your name? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, family. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, that was so cool, guys. I was sitting up the front there just getting ready to pop up and do this, and I could like you could feel the air reverberating. It was beautiful. So I just want to thank you all for that. All voices of angels, you lot. Isn't that cute? Heidi my welcome. My name is Fraser. If this is your first time here today, you are so welcome. And if it's your 100th time here today, you don't get a badge, but you're also so welcome. We should probably start doing that. It'd be fun. We get like, just like just showing off your set of badges like one of those North Korean generals. I'm just like all the way down here. Have you seen them? Yeah. You gotta like wear reinforced clothing so it doesn't drag. So yeah. Anyway, so I'm supposed to be hosting. That's my job. Um, and yeah, welcome. Um, I'll give you some deets about what's going on, and you'll be all the better for it, hopefully. So if we don't have your contact details, please give them to us so we can let you know what's going on, um, let you know what's um, happening with church and stuff like that. So if you haven't given us those details, there's these little yellow cards. They're nice and cute. Just write your details on them and pop them in the green box in the corner, and we will let you know what's happening. If you are unwell, or if you are unwell right now and you're at home, um, please do stay home and join us on Facebook Live instead. We would love to have you on Facebook, and um, for those of you who are doing that at the moment, thank you so much for looking after us. Um, we do know that there is a lot of um, nasty flus and still COVID running around, ruining people's um, early summers. So look after yourself. I hope you guys are getting well soon. Camp Out is coming up um, because the March of Time never ceases, and that's the 10th, the 12th of March. Um, spots are getting um, nabbed up pretty quickly, so do um, jump on our website, look at the information for that, um, and go on the Pucker website and book if you want one of the special little batches and stuff like that. It's always a great time if you haven't been to one of those before. Um, we get to go swimming. There's an awesome beach. We have usually a sandcastle competition that the adults maybe get a little bit too competitive on and that the kids have a lot of fun on. So come, do come along to that if you can make it and do that soon. Cool, another thing that's coming up on the 14th of November, Gary Best will be hosting a, what's called a new wine night here um, at Shaw Vineyard. Um, if you don't know who Gary Best is, Best is he's the a national director in, um, not California, there's a country north of America. It's the only one, Canada. Thank you. Um, and there, so he's the national director of Canada. Um, and so, and then we're going to be having the worship team from Coast Vineyard. So it's going to be a Shaw Vineyard or Vineyard family affair. So come along to that if you want to hang out, um, worship, um, receive some um, teaching, and just yeah, probably end up learning a little bit more about what Vineyard's doing worldwide as we all connect in that moment. Cool. If you are a giver here, thank you so much. If you want to become a giver here, if God is prompting you, um, those are the two easiest ways to do it. You can either very quickly memorize that, go, or you can go to our website slash give and it'll be written down. So for, for those of you amongst us who aren't superhuman. Cool. So we are very blessed today. Um, we have been doing a little bit of a interviews with uh, members of our morning and our evening congregation. Um, together at the same time, just so we can get to know them a bit better now that we are one church, one congregation uh, moving forward. So you need to give a big round of applause for John T and Kira, if you guys want to come up. Cool, you can fight to the death over this. If you, put, if you both go on the same side, so I don't do this. That, that, that works. Um, yeah, that's my better side, thank you. Okay, oh, so yeah. you guys will have to share, so share nicely. Um, so, yeah, John T, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Interesting tidbits included. Okay, um, so I'm. Mm. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm. I'm Why is that not working? Just keep talking, just keep Yeah. Going, yeah. Um, I'm 28, I live in the flat. Uh, 
Zer, Joel, and others. Gave you the spicy mic. Yeah. Yeah, you're really, really sabotaging me. That is, that is correct. Um, I signed the flat agreement and therefore I'm here. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, I just started a new job at Guthrie Baron, so come on down if you want paint and stuff. I don't know. And jelly beans, lots of jelly beans. No jelly beans today, sorry guys. Okay, good morning everyone. Um, I'm Kira, my husband Tim and my two kids over there. Um, <laughs> so a full-time mom job. Um, <laughs> um, I also work for the warehouse group during the week. Um, come from South Africa. We've been here three years, and I also help out in the kids, the kids church with Fraser on some Sundays. So you might see me disappearing halfway through the services um, in the mornings to help out there. Yes, Kira is an awesome member of our kids church team. So. Um, John T, tell us a little bit about, about how you ended up at Shaw and your, your, your vineyard journey, as it were. Like I said before, contractually obligated. Um, no, we, uh, my wife and I, sorry, I should have mentioned that, um, Xanthi, who's not here today, we're married, um, <laughs> whatever you call it. Um, we joined the flat uh, December last year and... As sort of a flat, we would be part of this church and invested in this church, and we came along and decided to give it a go and felt very welcomed by everyone. It feels like a great family environment, um, and it's just, yeah, easy to be here, and it's um, like people like Fraser and Vic make, and, and the greeters and others make so much extra effort to welcome you and include you it's yeah it's hard not to feel loved and wanted here so thank you john T. We'll, we'll keep you on eh? <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> kira how about your, your journey <laughs> to being with us today? pizza <laughs> pizza it was the kids that liked the pizza <laughs> um no so we arrived in new zealand just less than three years ago um and we were looking for a church because we've always found in all the different towns that we've lived in, we've moved around quite a bit since we were married. We've always had, you know, found a church. That's where we usually find your friends and your family and you feel connected. So changing countries was really a big step. So we were looking around for a, f a home to find and we went, visited quite a few churches and we came here in the February of 2020 and I think the church was doing a whole series of all those picnics and so on. So it was really great to be part of that. And then obviously like six weeks later, there was no more church for a long time, so that was a really long journey. But I think just being part of part of a community of people that live close by, live further away, that get together, that support each other, and we've really felt connected being here with all the, the amazing people, and the kids have made friends. So that's just been really important um, in getting us established and set up in a home here, because we have no family here either. So just having sort of a, an extended family has been really, really helpful. Awesome. Thank you, Kira. So... Um, Jonty, how about you share a little bit about um, what you feel God is doing in your life right now, or what's happening in your life and, and on your faith journey? Okay. Um, this is the question I did not prepare for. Um, yeah, so it's for me, it's a lot of um, uh, deepening of my faith and learning more about what uh, where my future lies in God, um, yeah, that, that's probably my main uh, sort of main path is is seeing what God has in store for me. Uh, currently, I've got no plan, and that's probably a good thing because then I can't try and impose my will on what uh, what God's got in store. But um, yeah, that's sort of what I'm what I'm looking at currently. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's been an interesting few years, I guess, for everyone as well. Um, I think three and a half years ago, if you'd asked if we were immigrating, we wouldn't have said, we would have said no. So it's been quite a journey over the last couple of years, coming across here, setting up a new life. Obviously, lockdown's been really hard. We've been away from family, so that's been really tough. And I think just being away from your normal comforts and what's familiar to you is a 
time of real sort of testing and really understanding what's your foundation based on and trusting in God more than you probably ever have before. So that's been a really sort of a, a learning over the period. It hasn't been easy and it hasn't been all revelations and amazing times. It's been quite tough sometimes. I think we've had our challenges, kids missing family and so on. But knowing God has always been there. He's opened the doors for us like we couldn't believe when we came here and just continuously, even though things felt dark, just knowing that there was actually light and just things opening up and um, just things progressing and knowing God's hand was in that and that he's always there for us even though times are difficult and that's just been a continuous journey and I guess it's never going to finish we're going to you know explore more of what God has planned for us and establish ourselves more and who knows where we end up in the next couple of years so <laughs> awesome thank you guys so much can we give a massive round of applause for these guys thank you thank you, you can go you are released you have fulfilled your contractual obligations. So thank you very much, Shanti and Kara. And guys, go talk to them. There's, there's more to them than just those three questions, and I'm sure they'd love to get to know you guys a bit better as well. So go chat to them after this. Before I let the kids out, one last thing. I have noticed that there is a silent auction for what looks like a really nice um, down and feather blanket, and I'm gonna feel really guilty if I win that silent auction for $1 over reserve. So please go. Go do that. I think the, um, the money from that goes to the food bank. So uh, it'd be great if we can support that. So Carly is going to come up and speak in a minute. But before we do that, let's chat to each other, get to know each other. Um, you can ask each other, how did you end up at Shaw? And then we will catch you in a bit. Let's go, kids. Let's go have some fun. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, Facebook people. Um, I've never done this soliloquy before, so I was a bit... Um, not really sure what to say, but um, I hope that those of you who are joining us online or later because you're away this weekend are having a great time enjoying the sunshine, and I hope those of you who might be sick, um, feeling under the weather, and that's why you're not here, I pray um, that you get better soon. I know there's lots going around at my workplace every day. There's four or five people out um, at the moment, and it's not fun, so I hope that you're feeling all right, getting looked after, and... Um, yeah, feeling connected anyway. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful day. Uh, I hope that those of you who are away get to go to the beach or go on a hike or enjoy the sunshine, um, drink some good coffee, all of the things that you enjoy doing on your days off. I know I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. Um, but this week has been a good one. Uh, we have... It's term, th term four started, so we've had a uh, youth group back this week. We had a really great one on Wednesday night. We had um, quite a lot of kids come. It was nice to see them all again. We'd missed them over the last couple of weeks, and we just had a games night, which was super fun. We played Hungry Hungry Hippos, which was absolutely chaotic with hundreds of little balls and kids on skateboards, and <laughs> it was good times, but it's always fun. Um, yeah, so I... I'm going to get set up now, um, and I will be with you in just a minute when I wrangle everyone's attention back. <laughs> I don't know if it's been long enough, but I ran out of things to say for the soliloquy, so I'm, <laughs> so I'm going to call your attention back, because um, I'm in charge this morning. <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. If you can... Oh, I'm getting louder. Um, as I was saying, I ran out of things to say on the soliloquy, so I'll ask you to, to join me and we can get started this morning with the message, which is super exciting. Um, yeah. Right. Well, morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting yet, my name is Carly. Um, and not only do I get the pleasure of speaking to you this morning, um, I also get the absolute honor and joy of leading the youth ministry here. And I love it. Um, we had our first one back this week after the school holidays, and it was absolute chaos. We played Hungry Hungry Hippos. Um, so pushing kids on skateboards while they gathered balls, and it was just absolute chaos. Um, yeah, it was really fun. So <laughs> it's nice to be back. Um, before we get started this morning, 
I don't know about any of you, but um, my week, my last few weeks have been quite chaotic, so I thought maybe before we start, we could all just breathe deeply together a couple of times, and as we breathe in, I like to sometimes, when I breathe in, um, I say, I kind of do it as like, why do a tapu fill me? So let's do that. I'll lead us. We'll do it three times. Hold your breath for three seconds. All right. Why do a tapu fill us? Two, three, and out. And in. Two, three, and out. How does that feel? Good, right? Nice and relaxing. I feel better. <laughs> One more time. Oh, sorry. One more time. And in. Nice. The third one's always the best one, so thank you. <laughs> right, well, we are still in our gospel series. I don't know if you guys have been enjoying it, but I've really been loving it. I really love the tagline of the series, With Jesus in the Gospels. I think it's a real privilege for us to get to um, dive into these accounts of Jesus' ministry on earth and know that as we look at these events, we... Um, which can sometimes feel a bit separated from us because they happened so long ago, um, we can sit in the truth that Jesus is here with us as we explore those things. And he's teaching us and ministering to us and speaking into that um, space. So that's cool. When I was writing this, I wrote that and I then said, oh, sounds a li little bit like I'm claiming to be Jesus, which I swear is not the case. I just trust that he's using um, a little bit, at least, of what I've got to say to you guys this morning. I hope you've enjoyed engaging throughout the week as well and exploring stories that might be familiar to us um, and be reminded of some important truths and get to know something new and exciting and experience it in relevant ways to you. So this week, we are diving into Matthew 20, which is exciting. We've got another, another parable, um, and we've got Jesus predicting his death again and kind of telling off the disciples, and then we've got another miracle. So it's jam-packed with Jesus-y goodness. But before we get into that, I want to start with a story, which makes it very clear that I am not, in fact, Jesus. And I think it's quite funny that my story this week, compared to Ian's lovely story last week of seeing... Um, cherry blossoms. Mine's quite different. Um, so a couple of years ago, over the summer, I had the amazing opportunity to pastor a church for three months. For my study, we did summer placements, and I ended up in a church in New Plymouth. Um, and it was great, but it left me alone for Christmas. But luckily, my parents decided that year that they wanted to spend Christmas in Topor. So I figured after the Christmas Eve service, I would drive from New Plymouth to Topor um, to see my family for Christmas. It's not too long a drive, but the road, like most open roads in New Zealand, was skinny and windy. Pretty early on, I got caught behind a van full of tourists who clearly were not used to New Zealand roads and they were driving pretty slowly. I figured, fair enough, New Zealand roads can be scary, take your time, no worries, so I hung back, gave them space, tried to make them feel comfortable like I wasn't pushing them to speed up. But I sat like that for quite a while. I was stuck behind this van for at least 30 minutes, and I have to admit, the longer I sat behind them driving 80 on a 100k road, the closer I got, um, hoping to encourage them to speed up a little bit. <laughs> my patience grew thin, my grace for them ran out. Why are they even driving if they can't drive the speed limit, is what was going through my head. <laughs> so this story is a cl classic example of something very human, road rage. Uh, also, impatience, <laughs> good intentions stretched thin. And I think that Matthew 20 is teaching us about God's grace for people, and thankfully, he's a lot better at it than I am. The first section of Matthew 20, verses 1 to 16, is um, a parable. Jesus is telling us a story of a landowner hiring people to work in a vineyard. So let's read together. Jesus starts his parable. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them one denarius for the day and sent them out into his vineyard. About nine in the morning, he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, you also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. 
He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon, he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? I have no idea where I'm up to on there. Oh, yeah. Um, (laughs) Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, you also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So those who came, who were hired first, they expected to receive more. Um, But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. These who you hired last only worked one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money, or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. So I started today by telling you a story of my patience and kindness and grace running thin the longer I was stuck behind a slow car because I think it's a fairly accurate representation of what being a human looks like. It's a pretty harmless example of reaching a point where things shift, where our ability or perhaps our desire to be gracious and patient and judgment-free eventually runs out. We feel as though there's a point where people deserve it, and then past that point, we want to withhold it from them. A quote from N.T. Wright um, about Matthew 20, um, as I was reading, preparing for the sermon, really stood out to me, and it talks about God's grace from this specific passage. God's grace, in short, is not the sort of thing you can bargain with or try to store up. It isn't the sort of thing that one person can have a lot of and someone else only a little. The workers who began in the morning were upset that the landowner gave them the same as those who had only worked an hour. They didn't think that those who didn't work as long should be seen as equal to them or receive equal reward. In a money-driven world, that makes a lot of logical sense. I'm sure a lot of us would think the same. My time and my work is worth something. It's unfair that I'm getting the same as someone who didn't do as much as me. But God is not about fitting into human logic. God's grace and love and kindness isn't relational to what we deserve or what we earn. We can throw out judgment of other people, weigh them and find them wanting because we feel like we know where the line is in the sand, but I'm not sure that there even is a line. I know I'm guilty of this. This year, I've been grappling with the fact that there are people who I think are quite easy to love, people who I know for sure that Jesus wanted us to love, the widow and the orphan who represent all people at a disadvantage. Those people are easy to love, but but I find it hard to have grace and love for those who mistreat others, who steal or hate, and especially if they do it in the name of Jesus. This parable shows us that there is no point where God's willingness to love and care for people and provide for people ends. Jesus washes away that line in the sand. N.T. Wright notes that the men who aren't working at five answered because no one has hired us when they're asked why they're not working and that this is most likely because they weren't desirable employees. For some reason or another, people didn't want to hire them. But the landowner in the story says, come on, I'll give you a job. And beyond that, he pays them generously. He saw them for who they were and judged them worthy of grace and care. God's grace, in short, is not the sort of thing that you can bargain with or try to store up. It isn't the sort of thing that one person can have a lot and someone else only a little. The fullness of God's grace is available to anyone who wants it, no matter who they are 
no matter what they've done. This can be a hard pill to swallow. It can be hard for us to reconcile the fact that God gives the same grace to people who are martyred or people who have worked tirelessly their whole lives for God and someone who becomes a Christian at the very end of their life having caused lots of pain and suffering along the way. The landowner pays everyone the same wage no matter how many hours they worked. It sounds unfair and it's frustrating, but the life and death and resurrection of Jesus isn't about fairness. It's about freedom. We can't negotiate or earn what we might consider better. Our relationship with God isn't a contract. It's a covenant where God promises us everything and asks for everything in return. But like I said, it can be uncomfortable when we don't think that people around us should have the same grace or the same covenant with God that we do. Um, When I was writing this, it reminded me of the story of Jonah. Uh, One of the first sermons I ever preached to the wider congregation um, was uh, from Jonah, and I called that sermon Uncomfortable Grace. Jonah ran in the opposite direction when God asked him to go and speak to the people of Nineveh about himself. And he did that because he knew that they would hear what God had to say and they would repent and they would respond to God and then God would show them grace and mercy. But he did not think that they deserved grace and mercy. He wanted them to suffer and that was his judgment on them. But God wanted to give them a chance to repent and change their ways, to turn to him. And they did. And of course, God showed them the same grace that he shows anyone willing to repent and change their ways and turn to him. Wright talks a little bit about this idea of covenant over contract, that it's not a negotiation, um, he said, because it's not about earning reward for behavior. The reward we may get... uh, The rewards we may get are simply God doing what comes naturally um, to his overflowing, generous nature. He can't help but love us and show us grace when we all choose to follow him. So there's no, there isn't a more or less in relationship with God. There's an all or a nothing. And if we choose to follow him, we get all. The same idea is emphasized in the miracle at the bottom end of Matthew. Um, verses 29 to 34. As Jesus and his disciples were leaving Jericho, a large crowd followed him. Two blind men were sitting by the roadside, and when they heard that Jesus was going by, they shouted, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they shouted all the louder, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. Jesus stopped and called them. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. Lord, they answered, we want our sight. Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. Immediately they received their sight and followed him. As Jesus journeys out of Jericho, he's followed by a crowd, which is pretty normal. Who wouldn't want to see a man who's going around performing miracles in the name of Jesus? of God. He was Jesus in the name of God. But this passage notes that when the blind beggars call out to Jesus, they are rebuked that the crowd tells them to be quiet. The crowd saw these men and deemed them unworthy of Jesus's time or attention. His love and his care and his grace were better pointed elsewhere. But Jesus disagrees. He hears the men call out to him, Lord, son of David, have mercy on us. And he's moved by their words, and he approaches them. He's full of compassion, a compassion that never runs out. And he never sees someone seeking him, and he thinks, nah, not you, not today. The crowd may have assumed that these blind beggars were going to ask Jesus for money, but Jesus knew better. And even if that was what they were after, they still deserved to be heard and seen by Jesus. But that isn't what they were after, and Jesus gave them what they really wanted. And because of that, they followed him. Jesus showed grace and mercy to these social lepers who were overlooked, stuck begging for anything to get them through the day. He changed their lives when no one else would have even given them the time of day. 
because of his unfailing love that doesn't discriminate and his grace for all who seek it. Grace is offensive at times. Grace is uncomfortable. Grace is challenging. And grace can make us into our worst selves like Jonah. Because grace is undeserved. It is illogical to us. But that's what makes it so beautiful. Psalm 103 talks a bit about this idea. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. I love this psalm. I love how it's a reminder that we're all in the same boat. Not a single one of us is deserving of the grace that God shows us. But because he deems us so, we are worthy of it. Because of Jesus, we are made free and we are fully and freely loved by God. Um, I want to quickly mention the flip side of this idea um, of grace, that sometimes we feel like we're the ones who don't deserve grace. We, fear, we can fall into the habit of feeling like we need to earn God's love and grace and kindness, but that's not the truth. No matter what you've done or said, God's grace is full for you in your life always. God's grace is uncomfortable to witness because it is so full and so beyond what we feel like we've earned. But we don't have to earn anything. I don't, and neither do you, and neither does anyone else, no matter what they may have to say about it. Jesus spoke. On the cross, he freed us. Forgiveness was asked for and received. Praise the Lord for that. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. Jesus died on the cross and he came back to life. He defeated death and sin, and that was not a weak act that we can overturn by doing or saying something wrong. It's not about being good enough or earning anything. It's about that cross. The reality that the cross changed things for eternity and we are not powerful enough to undo what he did on the cross. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. The power of the cross is the power of the love of Jesus that he has for each and every one of us, no matter how we feel about it. If we think we deserve it more or less than others, if we think we've been toiling in the hot sun in the vineyard all day long and other people have just arrived or we've just arrived after doing some naughty things and other people have been there all day long, all that matters is that you showed up to the vineyard, that you are allowed, that you allowed God to enter into your life and along with that, all of his grace and all of his love and all of his forgiveness in full. A grace and a love and a forgiveness that never runs out for us. The landowner asked, are you envious because I am generous? It's a difficult question when your answer is yes. <laughs> I know I've been there feeling like others are getting things and I'm missing out when I feel like I deserve them too. But wouldn't it be so much better if we see God's favor and generosity for others in their lives and we praise him for that, that we celebrate with them and for them and be happy for them? But because the truth was, is, and always will be, is that God is generous. So let's try not to be envious about it, because at the end of the day, God gives us everything, and that's what matters. Why do we need to compare my everything to your everything? Comparison is a killer and it is not worth it. So if we focus instead on the everything in front of us and the generous nature of God, I think we'll all be the better for it. I'm going to pray. <laughs> and then the band's going to come back up. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the fullness of grace no matter what, that your grace isn't relational to what we deserve. Thank you that you wash away the line so, um, so that we 
don't have to worry about whether we deserve it or other people deserve it. Lord, I pray um, that you help us to do the same in our lives and for ourselves and for others. May we show your grace to others in full. Thank you that you give us everything, no matter what. And because of your sacrifice, we only have to choose to accept it, and you are all in. Lord, I pray that you help us to show and accept this grace today, this week, and moving forward. Amen. Kia ora. Thanks, guys. Um, so the band's going to do another song for us. And as that's happening, if you um, want prayer or anything, you're welcome to come up to the front. And me or anyone else who is able to can pray for you. You can ask the person next to you. Um, yeah, feel free to respond to what God's saying to you today. Um, those of you on Facebook Live will end it there. I pray a blessing over your week. Thanks for joining us. Cheers, guys. Thanks.